Dominica to expect increased cruise passengers in 2014. A new bridge will mean improved access to community services for Pichle residents. And Dominican Archbishop Kelvin Felix named the Cardinal of the Roman Catholic Church. Thanks for joining us on National Focus. I'm Jana Hector. And I'm Tanya Green. Stay with us for the details of the headline stories and more coming up right after the break. Dominica is blessed with an abundance of water, but getting it to your home is an expensive venture. You have a responsibility to conserve water, to use it wisely. Remember the old adage, you never miss the water till the well runs dry. Think water, think water. Life. Thank you for staying with us. Tourism officials here are predicting an increase in the number of cruise visitors to the island in 2014. Director of Tourism and head of the Discover Dominica Authority, Colin Piper, said the presence of four cruise ships in port on Monday is testimony of that new trend. Last year, Dominica attracted approximately 230,000 cruise passengers. An estimated 100,000 cruise passengers are expected to experience the island from a total of 207 cruise calls during this cruise season. This year, uh, we are, the cruise passenger numbers should be up about, uh, I want to say about somewhere between 80 and 100,000 from last year. Last year we feel we hit a trough. We were at about 225, 230 for the cruise season. And this year we're going to be in the 320, 325,000 range. So there are quite a few more cruise passengers that will be coming um, from a combination of uh, more calls as well as um, cruise ships with larger numbers coming. The average cruise passenger spends 50 US dollars and based on the increased numbers of cruise visitors expected this year, Dominica could benefit from about 4.7 million US dollars in earnings as a result. In light of this, Piper is hopeful that tourism stakeholders on the island will take advantage of the opportunities that increased cruise ship calls will bring to the destination. So hopefully the stakeholders can put their best foot forward, can increase their the quality of their service so that uh, the passengers have uh, experience that's second to none. Um, we'll leave revenue on island and we'll go out there and word of mouth um, advertise that, you know, Dominica is a, is a stop that should be on the itinerary and more so that you need to get off when in Dominica and go take a tour or walk about or, or do something that um, results in, you know, foreign exchange um, being left on island. The Ministry of Tourism, in collaboration with the Discover Dominica Authority, has been putting systems in place to attract more cruise visitors to the island. Piper says while the ministry is playing a major role, the private sector has a responsibility to make visitors' experience a rewarding one. What we can do from a Discover Dominica perspective, from a Ministry of Tourism perspective, from a DASPA perspective, is to encourage the vessels to come. And then we have to make sure that the experience they get, what it is that the tour operators advertise, what it is that the vendors have to sell, uh, the types of shopping we have, and all the other um, um, experiences that we offer, that needs to speak for itself and entice the people to come off the, the vessel and, and, and participate in some sort of activity. And so it's a... Uh, it's, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's a collaboration between both uh, public sector and the private sector. He notes that the sales job of crew on the cruise vessels is also an important element in determining how many visitors disembark the vessels. He hastened to add that tour operators also have a critical role to play. The other thing is based on the sales job that is done on the vessel by the shore excursion manager to say, hey, we're going to Dominica and Dominica has all these wonderful things to offer. 
So that's done both in person as well as in terms of the collateral that they have. And then third is what the tour operators and the people who have access to the ship uh, and the marketing uh, on the ship uh, provide. So how, um, um, how colorful is the, is the uh, explanation about coming off on Dominique and going to the Trafalgar Falls and going to Emerald Pool and taking a scenic tour? How colorful is that from the tour operator here, the Whitchurches, the Hibiscuses, the, all those, the Nitas, the, all those who are a part of advertising to the ship? So again, you can see it's a joint effort. And then, coming off the ship now, what is the welcome like? Is the welcome a, a chaotic, or is the welcome very nice and, and, you know, welcoming? While tourism authorities are optimistic about the returns that cruise passengers will bring to the destination, there is a continued drive for 90,000 stayover visitors by 2015. Tanya, obviously, this is not something that you hear every day, that we have increased cruise callers to the island. And I think important to note in this story is the fact that the Discover Dominica CEO wants stakeholders to take an active part in claiming those benefits that are available for them. Yes, because according to him, Dominica is putting all the necessary infrastructure in place to accommodate uh, increased cruise ships to Dominica. We know in recent times we've had, you know, some challenges as it relates to attracting a number of important uh, cruise lines to the country. Mm -hmm. And um, we've made some headway in that. So at this point, for example, today we had four cruise ships in port. Right. And um, people might say, well, you know, um, are the vendors, are the taxi operators, are the other stakeholders actually benefiting from, from the presence of these cruise visitors. And at the end of the day, they have a responsibility to ensure that they benefit. How do they do that? By making sure that they present, uh, you know, um, something that will encourage the visitors to continue to come back to Dominica. We have to present service second to none. Um, the whole issue of customer service is also necessary. How do we welcome these um, visitors when they come to the island is also very important because first impression is important. So yes, while it is true that government is providing the necessary infrastructure and the enabling environment to attract a cruise line to Dominica, but we as a stakeholders have uh, you know, an important role, equally important role to provide service which is second to none. I've always felt that um, besides the formal stakeholders that everybody is, is sort of an, an informal stakeholder because I might not be involved directly in the tourism industry but I have a role to play. Mm -hmm. Just if, if somebody wants directions from me I can just be friendly and help them and not try to scam them as a bus driver. A regular bus driver I don't have to charge them five dollars to go somewhere it costs mm -hmm. 250 you know that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. So I think um, it's important that now that this prediction has been um, Revealed. Revealed. Yes. <laughs> that everybody gets it, gets in the mode to do your own part to um, help Dominica's tourism industry. Yes, very good. So we're hoping that we all take heed and play our part in encouraging people to come to our destination. Well, in other news, the construction of a new bridge will mean improved access to necessary community services for Pishle residents. That's according to the parliamentary representative, Honorable Dr. Mm. Kenneth Daru. GIS News was on the site of that half of a million dollar project on Monday morning where workers were engaged in the construction of a foundation for the new bridge. Honorable Daru had a lot to say about the project including its necessity. It's something that has been spoken about in the community. I mean for decades now we're talking about way back in the time of the Freedom Party administration people have been talking about this access or motorable access to which is really the hub of the community, as you can see, the Roman Catholic Church, the health center, community center, basketball court, etc. Um, if you would, we maybe would have taken footage of previously what was, of course, was basically just a little footpath and a little, a little um, walkway there to, to, to the area. Project engineer with the Ministry of Public Works, Larry Alcindor, gave a very specific description of what that job entails. This project is basically the construction of this new access road to the basketball court, the church, village council, community center. The first part, as you can see, that's going on is the construction of a box culvert, twin cell box culvert, with a um, 
three meter by three meter inside the uh, inside dimensions. The engineer says with the construction of twin cells as the bridge's foundation, the structure will be sufficiently resilient against flash floods. Some level of road rehabilitation is also included in the job's description. So we will be also doing the, the bridge will have rails, two rails on its side, protection of persons from falling over, and rigid pavement from this main road there right up to the last pole by the basketball court area which will be about five meters wide the road will be five meters wide the thickness is basically five inches reinforced with brc because we expect heavy vehicles to be going in and out there for in future construction i mean they may want to put in a new resource center there later or anything so we're doing it strong enough Shane Alexander has been awarded the four-month contract. He began work late December. We organized this foundation already, so what we're going to do now, we're going to start working on the main wall right now. The most important thing is from the foundation. Right now we get to the foundation, so we're going to build the side walls, which of course it will go, it will go quick as possible because we have all the forms here, everything in order. The only challenge they had there is after we cast the foundation, like the river go down, it gives us a little blue, but we take our time to clean back with the excavator. Honorable Darrow told GIS News that his Pishle constituents had raised two concerns that they wanted addressed by their constituency representative. He says he is proud that he was able to meet those goals. I'm very excited and happy okay, that this is finally happening under my, happening rather under my stewardship because I said it's something that's very dear to the community and even in pre-election consultations with the community um, when priority lists will be in um, expressed to me by the different various communities. Two of the things that the Pishna community really asked me was that we have, that, we, that I try to do this thing under my watch, this bridge, and also the sidewalk from the Pishna village to the primary school. I'm very excited, I'm very happy, a little relief, a lot of relief, okay, that this is finally getting on the way. And I think that when this project is done, um, that yes, it's going to bring a lot of relief to the, to the um, Pishna community. Because one can imagine, I mean, in this day and age, we're talking about 2013, that there's no motorable access to a health facility. So you can imagine probably the hardship um, that, they, that the community had to go through in bringing elderly, probably not so um, mobile elderly citizens across to the health center for medical attention. Honorable Darrow is also pleased to report that 13 local tradesmen have found work on that project. GIS News discussed with Dr. Darrow other developments in his constituency. We'll bring you more in a subsequent newscast. In more news, the government of Dominica is fulfilling its commitment to provide employment for its young people through the apprenticeship program, which is designed primarily to teach trades to unemployed youth. Honorable Reginald Austri, through the National Apprenticeship Program, has provided job training opportunities for 14 young men in the cottage constituency over a period of four months. In that particular constituency, we had a few dropouts, a few guys who didn't make it through high school. And they were virtually on the streets. And so we have been constantly looking for a way in which to engage them. And so the housing program and the uh, apprenticeship program announced by the government, we have in fact taken them up and we're talking about pretty close to 20 guys and youngsters between the ages of, say, of 15 and 20, 22. And we've taken them up and we've placed them on these projects. And what we're actually doing is we're actually teaching them the trade. Because in that constituency, uh, the major source of livelihood is construction. And so we bring them in a setting where they can do both the theory and the practical. And the theory is easy, but because of the project that is taking place, we use that opportunity to do the practical work. And what you see there is a group of young men who a couple of weeks ago who just loitered in the streets of Cottage and Clifton and Capuchin, and we brought them together under that program to teach them the trade and to pay them a stipend in the meantime. And I must say to you that based on reports that I've been receiving from the contractors and the tutors, some of them are doing exceedingly well. In fact, they already have persons that, that can be recommended uh, to uh, other contractors when the work applies. In a recent interview, Housing Officer Greg Francis expressed his contentment with the program's progress and further informed of the project's conception as well as its beneficiaries. We started with four months. But, but what I really want to see, and, and I can say from the standpoint that um, there are guys there that um, I can recommend to anybody or any other contractor who, who needs people to work. 
there are guys here who um, grab the opportunity and are able to, so to speak, hold, hold their own. Project contractor Kofbo Daniel applauds the initiative of the minister to provide employment and training for the young men of the community. He states that the minister's actions have allowed them a sense of personal freedom and a chance to earn a living. According to Daniel, the young men are receiving, quote, a second chance in life. Well, the project is a very good project and it has been going on very well so far. You know when you're working with young people, they are either, you know, you have to speak very often to them because of the behavior. As I told them some time ago, that they are having a second chance in life because when one drop off from school, whether primary or secondary school, that you have forfeited most, about 90% of your life. But if you are able to get an opportunity in the, getting a skill, that you have a chance again making it. I give them the example of the constructors we have that are doing it very big on the outside in Portsmouth, for example. I see they have a chance to do as well. So that is why I keep speaking to them and I want to make sure, taking them off the street now, they are not only coming here for the duration of the project and after the duration of the project, when they go home, they're going back on the street. I want them to um, grasp as much as they can so when they get off this program, they can go on a job anywhere and ask for a job and start building their future. Speaking to GIS News last Friday, the trainees on the project showed great admiration for the government of Dominica and their parliamentary representative for allowing them the opportunity to work. Well, I'll just be home sitting, sometimes watching TV or sometimes doing like a jury, nothing else to do. But now I get in the opportunity to learn a trade that will better my future. The project is going very good, you check. So it's like it's perfect, you check. I like I learning a skill like off the streets, better life for me and my mother, you check. A family member of one of the trainees, Julian Joseph, is a recipient of one of the houses currently under construction. He expressed his gratitude to the government for the opportunity and for a new home. I feel really good, you know, we, we, our house before, you know, it was a you know, dilapidated condition, you know, so I'm really thankful for, the, for, for Alvaro, you know, and then helping us to get a new house, you know, so yeah, I'm really grateful. Upon completion, the individuals will receive certificates of qualification and recommendations which they can utilize for future job opportunities. In more news, Dominican-born Archbishop Kelvin Felix has been named as Cardinal of the Roman Catholic Church. The announcement was made on Sunday, January 12, 2014. Archbishop Felix is among 19 Catholic prelates from around the world who were elevated to the office by Pope Francis. In his announcement, the Pope stated that the new cardinals represent the deep relationship between the Church of Rome and the other churches throughout the world. Archbishop Kelvin Felix was born in Dominica on February 15, 1933, and was ordained a priest on April 8, 1956, at the age of 23. On July 17, 1981, he was appointed Archbishop of Castries and ordained Archbishop on April 5, 2008. As Archbishop of Castries, he was the Metropolitan of the province, which comprised the Archdiocese of Castries St. Lucia, St. George's in Grenada, St. John's Master in Antigua and St. Kitts, and Dominica. Since his retirement as Archbishop, Felix moved back to Dominica where he has been helping out in various parishes and served as parish priest of St. Patrick, Grand Bay and St. Mark in Soufre. One of the functions of the Cardinals of the Catholic Church is to elect a new pontiff. However, as he is over 80, Archbishop Felix will not be eligible to vote for a new pope. Meantime, Acting Prime Minister Honorable Reginald Austri, on behalf of the Government of Dominica on Monday, congratulated Archbishop Kelvin Felix on being elevated to the post of Cardinal. We in Dominica are very proud of Archbishop Felix's achievement in the Catholic Church. His decision to return home after retiring as Archbishop demonstrated his love for country and desire to play his part in the spiritual development of the people. On behalf of the government and people of Dominica, in particular the Catholic community, 
I congratulate Cardinal Felix Silek and wish him great success in his new vocation. We'll continue to pray for him, asking God to give him the guidance he needs to continue his ministry. We here at the Government Information Service congratulate Archbishop Felix for the great honor bestowed on him. And that's all for the English segment of National Focus. Macpherson St. Louis is next with the Creole Highlights. Hello, tout le monde. Bienvenue à ces nouvelles en Creole. Non, moi, c'est Macpherson St. Louis. Premièrement, le gouvernement Dominique a complimenté le cardinal Kelvin Felix à ses appointements comme cardinal. Acting pour le ministre Honorable Reginald Austin, et je suis en parole à ce compte gouvernement qui a concerné ça. À ce compte gouvernement Dominique et le monde Dominique, nous avons un bon compliment pour le um, cardinal um, Kelvin um, Felix. Um, nous avons un bon compliment pour le même, mais pour, pour, pour Dominique. C'est un bon nom pour nous, um, parce que vous savez, le cardinal, c'est la première fois en uh, région, un uh, pays qui a parlé anglais, um, qui nous est un cardinal qui a sorti. Eve, parce que c'est un Dominique, nous avons un bon compliment pour Dominique. Et nous avons dit, um, depuis le. Um, um, Cardinal Francis, Cardinal Felix, um, tout les corps a fait paix. Um, tout le record là a, a, a dit nous qui était qu'il fait un bon travail. Il était Archbishop Castries, il était Archbishop St. George's, Archbishop Rozo. Il fait un bon travail pour l'Église catholique. Et nous avons cru que um, Cardinal Felix, um, c'est un bon exemple comme ça, un homme bon Dieu s'y si Et nous avons dit aussi, depuis qu'il a décidé pour lui retraite, En Dominique, il a continué le travail, il a fait le travail bon Dieu. Nous avons un homme qui montre qu'il y a un amour pour le pays et il a un développement spirituel dans le pays. Un développement spirituel pays là. Et nous avons souhaité un bon succès, une bonne santé et nous avons souhaité la vie longue pour continuer à faire le travail bon Dieu en Dominique. En notre nouvelle, on a fait attention à ce comment pour tenir une négociation en différentes organisations qui a représenté Patrick Union, qui a pris place en Dominique Simon Sala. C'est une cérémonie pour te ouvrir le workshop là, pour prendre place en UWI Bomatella. Ministère pour l'information, Honorable Ambrose George, représenté le gouvernement en cérémonie. Le workshop ça, qui a pris place pour deux jours, a été des nom hall Jamaïque, a, qui a facilité le workshop ça. Yon, c'est M. Danny Roberts, c'est qui chef. Um, you lost in share uh, trade union education institute avec un aussi ni um, doctor doctor noel cowell is a lecturer um a uh, ue uh, jamaic avec is des facilité c'est um c'est nom ça c'est nom qui bien is experience uh étudier and uh, bargaining um negotiation um pour mon kika uh, négocier pour um, proposition uh, travail, qu'à négocier pour position pour um, pour l'argent pour pour pour, pour payer mm -hmm. avec um, la ça nous voit bon il y a un grand de monde um, qui uh, attendait opening ceremony. Un autre nouvel officier touriste en Dominique a gardé le vent et puis anticipation plus passagers touristes visiter pays là pour l'année là. Parole salle a sorti hot chef Didi et M. Colin Piper. Si l'on M. Piper, ils ont fait au-delà de quatre bateaux touristes qui ont été assis pour en Wazo aujourd'hui. C'est testimonié pour supporter ça. L'année passée, 10 000 avec 30 passagers visitent le pays. Les choses Piper fait par Wall qui étaient aussi bon. Il y a une estimation de 100 000 passagers qui ont expecté pour expérimenter le pays pendant 200 avec 7 calls saison salle. Dominique a expecté pour bénéficier 4.7 million de dollars US si l'on résulte cela. Finalement, trois mecs ont pris place bien formidable à ce point puissant pour aller Health Center et puis l'Église catholique. Même par le honorable Dr. Kenneth Darrow, visiter le projet de la Je suis très content pour voir que le projet de la qui est un pont de café pour accès à Health Center. Catholic Church and the village council have come to see the Pichlin. Because the um, project is a project that the people of the Pichlin have to do for the Pichlin. We have to do the administration and the Freedom Party. We have to do the project. 
Ouais, nous avons des, des, des petits issues avec, avec l'année d'acquisition, mais tout ça, tout ça nous a nous, nous mangé, il y en a des choses à nous mangé. Et bien, tout ça nous a fait ces ressources, les financial ressources, là, to be made available pour nous commencer, pour nous commencer le projet. Ça. Et bien, quand nous avons le projet là, là bien, bien le chemin, et bien, et bien, nous sommes très contents, et nous savons que c'est mon piche. Mon piche, et bien, pas mon piche seulement, je suis health team, parce que comme, 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 comme on dit, mon travail pour le docteur de là pour combien d'années, chaque temps nous venons pour venir, nous ne pouvons pas un véhicule, nous allons en les chimères, nous allons marcher à cross, nous venons pour aider les pharmacies à chayer toutes ces drogues à cross en health center. Et bien, nous nous, nous, nous avons imaginé là, c'est ces vieux monde en communauté, en communauté à, qui étaient malades, qui étaient pour aller en health center, nous venons pour chayer parce que c'est un petit peu pour qui était là pour, 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 pour marcher à cross. So, comme je comme parle à moi, je suis content que ça a fait. Je suis venu dire que je veux dire que c'est mon âme, l'est de la constituante pour avoir une patience, pas perdre confiance en parler de Je suis espéré que dans les 9 ans, il y ait plus de bagages qui sont faites fait, fait pour nous. Mais c'est madame, ça c'est tout pour nous, belle en créole pour à présent. Non, moi c'est Marc Fossil Saint Louis. Au revoir. What your nails can tell you about your health coming up next. Do you have uncovered water storage drums around your home? Do you dispose of old tires, cans and old containers capable of holding water anywhere in your environment? Are you being bitten by mosquitoes, particularly at dusk and early morning? Do you keep houseplants in water? Do you spend your hard-earned cash to control mosquitoes? Has your community experienced dengue fever outbreaks? If your answer is yes, to at least three questions above, you are at risk to dengue fever. Join the fight against dengue fever. The responsibility for a dengue-free Dominica lies with you. So, get rid of the Aedes aegypti mosquito. mosquito. Your fingernails can indicate major health problems. For example, if your fingernail beds are looking a little pale, you could have anemia, a blood disorder characterized by a low red blood cell count. If they are thickened with or without a yellowish tone, that could mean a fungal infection. Brittle, thin or lifted nails can mean thyroid problems and dark brown or black vertical lines on the nail bed should never be ignored that could be a sign of melanoma which requires early detection and treatment. Healthy nails are smooth with a lighter half circle from where the nail starts growing. And that's all for this edition of National Focus. We always welcome your suggestions and your comments. Drop us an email at gis at dominica.gov.dm or visit our website at news.gov.dm. Friend us on our Facebook page and be sure to like our GIS Dominica fan page. You can also catch up on past National Focus newscasts on our GIS Dominica YouTube channel. On behalf of the entire news production team, I'm Jana Hector. And I'm Tanya Green. Thank you so much for watching. <laughs>